เท่านั้นครับรวมไทยสร้างชาติประเทศไทยต้องไปต่อใช่ใช่So welcome to Talking Politics, a special interview program of Thai PBS World, which we hope will help you understand the complexity of Thai politics, especially within the context of the upcoming general election. My guest today is Kun Ekanat Prampan, Secretary General of Rom Thai Sang Chat or United Thai Nation, the party that is nominating General Prayut Chan Ocha as the next Prime Minister. So welcome to the program, Kun Ekanat. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Very no. honored today Okay In fact คุณประยุทธ์ is one of the two candidates for prime minister of the party yes. and the other candidate is คุณพิลพันธ์สาลีรัฐวิภาค the party leader and I'm sure that your best case scenario is for คุณประยุทธ์ and คุณพิลพันธ์ to split the premiership half and half right <laughs> which is serving two years in succession <laughs> Yes If the voters allow you to do so Yes Yes because according to the constitution The, prime, the current prime minister, General Bayut, can only serve two years. Yeah, if he can make it back. <laughs> if he can make it back, yes. And we believe that he he can. Uh -huh. I believe that he can. Um, but of course, uh, after two years, we also have another candidate, yeah. which is suitable. Okay. Which is Kun Pilapat. Uh, but that will be another ball, another whole new game. Another two years. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. And you have to be decided by the, the parliament. Well. <laughs> If we propose only one candidate, then I'm sure the public will question uh, whether we will uh, drive for a change in constitution okay. in the future. <laughs> But As you just mentioned that uh, Rom Thai Sang Chat, uh, United Thai Nation, is a relatively new party. Right? Yes. But you have been hitting the campaign trail for weeks now, right? Yes. So what has been the feedback so far? Do people know your party more than just The fact that uh, it is nominating Kun Bayut as the prime minister <laughs> candidate. <laughs> yes, I, I think the feedback has been good. Mm. Um, since we've started the party, uh, myself mm. with Kun Pilapan uh, last August, uh, if you uh, follow the poll mm. that was conducted by uh, a, a reliable Uh, institution, you would have uh, witnessed that there has been a rise mm -hmm. in popularity of the party, and also uh, General Prayut since he joined the party. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, once we kick off the campaign trail mm -hmm. officially mm -hmm. after um, the third of April. Um, I'm certain that before the day of the ballot, mm. that we would be uh, 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 admirable contending forces. I see. No, when Kun Prayut was elected prime minister the last time four years ago, he was under a different banner, Palang Pacharat Party, right? And back then, people believed that he succeeded largely because he was able to portray himself as a, a guarantor of peace and order and stability. So, what kind of uh, message is Kun Prayut sending out now? As to what kind of leader would he be? Well, first of all, we mm. must not forget mm. that General Prayut can still be portrayed as uh, a figure mm -hmm. that brings stability mm. to to uh, Thailand, mm. to the society, and and Thai politics. Mm. And in fact, um, I think that the economy. And the state of Thailand at the moment that we are, you know, we are benefiting from the economy because of this stability. Mm. And with General Prayut joining the new party, what we are hoping for is to build on General Prayut's success mm. as the leader of this government over the last few years, okay. on um, building, strengthen, strengthening uh, the basic infrastructure of this mm. country. Running the government, um, promoting trade, uh, promoting relationship between um, Thailand and foreign countries, mm -hmm. and driving the economy forward. Uh -huh. um, and so, with this party, I think we are we are we are basically um, building on the success, and okay. we are hoping to also instill some new forces 
um, to to General Prayuth mm. as a party. I see. And that's why Kun Prayuth has been campaigning on this uh, message. I have done it. I'm doing it. And I will continue to do it. <laughs> it, it he used these uh, phrases to describe what he believes to be his achievement over the past eight well, years. Well, he's right? probably the only uh, one. Are people who's... buying this? Are people buying this message? Yes. Yes. I, uh, well, he's he's he can claim uh -huh. um, all the success mm. um, during uh, you know, the, the, this government. I, I won't say during because we, obviously the parliament has um, dissolved. Yeah. But he he. Because he was, he was basically the leader of this government, he can claim mm -hmm. the success of this government, mm -hmm. and he can claim that um, all the benefits um, that the people are receiving from the government basically was uh, part of his, mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest part um, of his own success also. And so he, 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 he has the right to claim mm -hmm. <laughs> that he's done it, <laughs> uh, he's doing it, and hopefully he'll uh -huh. do, do it okay. uh, again. Okay, all right. You see it as uh, eight years of achievements, right? But his critics <laughs> would see other, the, the opposite, right? Uh, eight years of failures. <laughs> well, it's, it's a matter of opinion. Uh -huh. And in uh -huh. politics, we have, we, we have to accept um, criticisms and we okay. have to accept um, different views. From my side, I believe that um, for the last uh, years um, during General Prayuth government, we believe that has been a success. I believe that has been his accomplishment mm -hmm. and we're hoping to build on from that. Okay. Now it's quite clear that uh, Kun Prayuth is making a very interesting transition <laughs> from being a military strongman now to yes. becoming a full-fledged politician, yes. right? Yes. How do you think he's handling this transition? Well, to the public, I think good news, he's also evolving mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, from um, the a, a military leader mm -hmm. to, to fulfill his role as the leader, leader of the government, and now to fulfill his new role as a political leader. Mm -hmm. This time around, mm -hmm. Um, he has decided to join uh, the party membership. He's also the uh, chairman of the strategic board of the party. Mm -hmm. And he's also heading this party campaign, oh, which he hasn't done during the last election, oh. but he's doing it this okay. election. Mm. And I think he's adapting. I think okay. he's evolving. Uh -huh. And we can see that the public is also responding um, to this new change mm -hmm. and accepting him in this new okay. role as a political leader. Mm. But do you think he's ready, ready to really t turn himself into a full-fledged politician? Oh yes, yes. I, I, during this campaign, uh -huh. I, I've been with him. You, you're the, um, well, you're one of the persons often. closest to him, so you should know. <laughs> quite what. often, yes. And I, I will be with him <laughs> okay. um, during the campaign. Uh -huh. And I think he's adapting well. Uh -huh. um, mm. He's adapting to. Um, public speaking yeah. to the public yeah. and, and I think it, it might take time but he has mm -hmm. a lot of experience yeah, already um, but I think and, and I think he's, he's enjoying his new role as well. I <laughs> no, I certainly, I would, certainly would want to know more about uh, this particular aspect of Kun Prejud being a, a politician, <laughs> right? Because I have to admit that even though he has been in power in office eight years, even journalists admit that they still have limited knowledge yes. as, to, as to his inner thinking, his style of management, and how he interacts with people who work with him around him. So what, what, what is he like I mean, when he is down uh, on, on the campaign trail with, with you and your, your colleagues in the party and well, talking to people? Like that? I think to the, to the people around him, mm -hmm. he, he's loved by his colleagues, mm -hmm. by everybody who works around him. I think maybe what he lacks is the ability to communicate to the oh. press, mm -hmm. especially, <laughs> um, which I think is part of his development okay. from uh, the le military leader, mm. which doesn't require him to speak to the press, to communicate via the press, mm. and then to the leader of government, which he's, he's sort of adapting, but now as a political leader, it requires him to communicate <laughs> via the press to the public more efficiently and better than what he has done before. Uh, uh, and I think he's, he's changing. Okay. 
Okay. And, and we can witness this change also. Okay. Because through his uh, interaction with the media <laughs> and through his speeches, uh, we, we, all, we have the image of him being uh, a very moody person at times, mm. uh, can be very uh, mercurial, right? <laughs> so so in, in person, when you talk to him or when he is under pressure working with people in the party, does he exhibit that kind no, of... I, uh, um, behavior? He's, he's a strong leader. Uh -huh. he's, he's decisive. Mm -hmm. um, but in a way, he's, he's, um, you know, he, he's not uh, as tyrannical as the press mm -hmm. um, trying to project <laughs> him to be. To around him, he accepts views, okay. he makes decisions, but make decisions um, with um, the sense of, you know, with common sense, with logic. Uh -huh. And, and I think in a way, um, the public do understand this. Mm. Um, most people, a lot of people see that he's an honest man. Okay. He speak his thinking um, and, and, and he speak truth mm. to the public always. Um, even though some of those truths may come out as <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> may be perceived to be uh, more than the the press can accept or the public can accept, <laughs> but it still remains the truth. Uh, and I think people want an honest leader. Okay. So you believe that that's what people see in him now, <laughs> after so, uh, weeks on uh, campaign trail? I think the part of the people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But does he scold party members like the way he, he does to the media, <laughs> the press? Honestly <laughs> speaking, no. Um, around him, he's, he's, he's very pleasant to work with. Okay. He listen. Um, to comments, listen to views, mm. and he make decision based on uh, on the you know the people advice and people comments. It's honestly, it's nothing like when he's in front of the press. Okay. <laughs> All right. So how how would you would you imagine him being prime minister again, but now being democratically elected more yes. than before, right? So well, how, what would time, it be like? Okay. Last time it, it, it was a democratic yeah. um, election, but obviously some critics may say that mm. um, because it's back, back to back from yeah. the, the, um, the coup. Yeah. But this time we can say fully mm -hmm. that this is, this is almost fully in a, a democratic election. Oh. Well, it is a fully democratic election. Mm. Um, and I, I still believe that General Payut um, will perform well mm -hmm. in this election and is still popular mm. among a lot of people. Mm. But I think um, for, the, for the next few months, the party will have to work hard mm. trying to communicate um, you know, what General Prayut has done for this country, what the party will do with General Prayut mm. for the country, mm. and what's, what lies ahead in the future. Okay. We have to work very hard and communicate okay. very hard also. Okay. Right. Now, Prayut is the, the candidate for Prime Minister of the party, but he is not running as an MP candidate, mm -hmm. uh, which came as a big disappointment to many of his supporters, <laughs> right? Because people had expected him to be on top of the list of uh, the MP party list. Mm -hmm. But he decided that he would forego that, 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 uh, that thing. So his decision was his own choice or was it something that the party debated and then came up with some kind of a consensus on this? We've never debated mm -hmm. um, on this issue. We've just accepted that uh, I think for General Prayut mm -hmm. to join the party membership, to become the chairman of the strategic board, mm -hmm and to head the campaign, I think it's enough. And for him, like many other figures who decide to join politics, some of them may not uh, like uh, to be a member of parliament. They, mm. they might not like, to, um, you know, to, this is a, a legislative role. Mm. Some of them may opt for the executive role, may join um, politics, as a uh, leader in the government, they join as a member of mm -hmm. cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is just uh, standard, I think. Uh, so. And I think what we have to decide on what is most suitable mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. both General Bayut, for the, for the party, 
and also for the public. Mm. And the party uh, never tried to convince him to change his mind, right? No, <laughs> definitely not me, actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, with, with this, I mean, uh, some people may raise doubts as to whether Kun Bayut is serious about becoming a full fresh politician. <laughs> I think right. he's very serious. Um, you know, he's done, he, he's obviously have come out of his uh-huh. comfort zone. Uh-huh. Um, last election, he was only presented as a candidate as a prime minister candidate. Mm. This time around, he's joined the party membership, he's become the chairman, he has a role, Mm. a position in the party, Mm. and he's heading the campaign. Mm. In in the public event, he's he's heading the campaign, he's Mm. heading the politicians, so Mm. he's 99.99% full-fledged politician. Uh Uh He is the chief strategist of the party, right? So what, what role does he play in, in, in that position? Well, uh, I think that for the managing day-to-day, mm. on a day-to-day basis, we have, an, we have executives, party okay. executives. But we think that for this political party to become a political institution, we mm. must have uh, a body which oversee uh, the general direction of this party, mm-hmm. like, for example, policies, for example, or the party political position. Mm-hmm. And so this committee, which we call the, 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 the Thai name is actually very long, is actually a strategic board, oh. which Kun Prayut is heading, okay. is, is the chairman. Uh, and so basically this, uh, it's responsible for directing the party on a long-term mm-hmm. basis. Um, on creating policies and also oversight mm. and overseeing um, politicians' conduct within I the see. party. Mm. Sure. As you know, the one, one disadvantage of Kun Prayut, you just mentioned earlier about his uh, term limit, right? If he manages to, to get advantage. back to... Uh, <laughs> advantage. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I see, I mean, most people see it as a disadvantage. But how, 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 how big a uh, liability it is when he goes out to meet people? Uh, people ask questions about, what can you do in two years, in uh, just two years? As you say, mm. I think it's, 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 it's an advantage. <laughs> um, I said disadvantage. Disadvantage, <laughs> okay, sorry. Well, I think that two years, the term limit, it's yeah. not a problem. Mm. It's not a problem. And if you look back in history, mm. actually most government never survived the first year. <laughs> so for two years, Two years is sufficient time uh-huh. um, to complete most of the work that he has started, started already. Mm-hmm. As we have said earlier in the program, he's done it, he's doing it, and hopefully within the next two years, if he comes back, he will complete the things that he has done before. Mm-hmm. Like, as I say, strengthening in infrastructure, promoting the economy, creating equal opportunity mm-hmm. for the society through um, uh, 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 accountable welfare programs. Mm. These were the successes of this government, and hopefully he will come back and complete these accomplish- okay. com- accomplishments. I see. So, with the election, election is uh, only weeks away. So, what what is your expectation for uh, Rum Thai Sang Chat? We have to b- do the best possible, mm. um, and I think every party are uh, in it to win it. We're in mm. the election to win the election, of course, but our expectation can only be based on mm. the number of votes that we will get from the population. Mm. It can only be that. Um, we're hoping to perform well. From the poll, I think that I can rightly say that we are competitive. Okay. Mm. Being a new party, we are, we are now uh, matching against mm. um, existing parties big parties um, like Pria Thai, uh, Democrat yeah. or Palang Pachalap. Mm. Mm. Um, and so we are, we are, we are competitive. Yeah. Now many people see this upcoming election as in a battle between uh, Kun Prayut <laughs> and what is known as the Thaksin regime, right? About <laughs> Thaksin, right? Is that the right I mean, narrative I mean, to explain what is coming up? Well, I think if you, if you study mm. uh, politics around the world, you can say that um, it's, it's quite normal, mm-hmm. um, quite normal um, in, in a national election to have two contending views or mm-hmm. political positions. We've 
seen in foreign countries, uh, in a developing, mm. in a developed country, where uh, dem um, democracy is developed. There is, you know, there's always a, a competition between conservatives, between the liberals, for example, mm. and and I think Thailand is also progressing towards that. Okay. Um, I think with the change in the constitution, mm. the change in the rule. Um, in the future, we are, we are progressing towards uh, mm. uh, not so many parties um, in the government mm. um, and bigger parties, more stability in mm. the government, more stability in politics. Mm. And so it will be a battle between contending views and contending positions. Mm -hmm. mm. And for the public, General Prayut represent clearly, I think, the sort of the conservative side uh -huh. and say that. Uh, but he's not so conservative in most things, but from the public view, he's the champion of the conservatives. Mm. And for the uh, Pria Thai, um, the public see them as uh, the champion of the uh, populist regime. Mm -hmm. And it's quite normal, quite natural, mm -hmm. to see the election as the battleground uh -huh. between the conservatives and the populists. Mm. But wouldn't it be a little bit ironic for you because many years back, eight years back when you took to the street, <laughs> yes. right, against the Yungnak government, you were yes. fighting against what was termed as the uh, Thaksin regime, regime back then, yes. right? But now, almost 10 years later, the specter of Thaksin the, uh, regime has come back to haunt you again. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a different way. Um, I was a politician, I was an elected member of parliament, and uh, that election, Kun Ying Lak won. I had no problem with that. Okay. I had, on the other hand, I had problem with um, the in, um, the amnesty law, mm -hmm. which uh, um, basically challenges the rule of law mm -hmm. in this country, which I still believe um, in uh, today mm -hmm. that um, the rule of law is important in a democratic system. Mm. And so I, I don't think that that has changed, but of course the political environment has changed 10 years ago mm. to now. Uh, it has always changing and it will always change. Mm. You know, this uh, election is also being watched by international community. Mm -hmm. And people, of course, I mean, Kun, Kun, but you cannot deny the fact that he, he was a coup maker, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he stayed in power largely because of the, as a legacy of what he did eight, eight years ago. So how would you explain to our foreign audiences, international community, that if Kun Bayut manages to come back again, that would not be a continuation of the legacy of the military coup d'etat? Well, I think as head of the, the coup, mm -hmm. obviously um, he might be denied by the international community. Mm -hmm. But he was, after the last election, he was an elected leader. Mm. And we have seen that he has used his position as the leader of the government of Thailand mm -hmm. to promote relationship between Thailand and, and the international community. He, he was accepted by mm. the international community already. Mm. And this time around, I think that to the world, mm. I think we, we, can, we can accept that this coming election will be fully democratic and whoever win in this coming mm. up election mm. and being able to form a government, we have to accept the leader as the leader of a democratic nation. Mm. Mm. Of course, this also raises the issue of uh, another group of very crucial players in the post-election scenario, mm. and that is the senators. Right? Mm. <laughs> if you're talking about Kun Bayut making a comeback through election, I think that's fine. But there are many people who are quite worried that uh, he would still be thinking of uh, using his legacy in the Senate I mean, to support his return to power. So as far as you're concerned, your party is concerned, is it something you have in mind that you, somewhere down the road, you will always have these people that will support Kun Bayut I, in, in me, the Senate? I, mean. I, I would hope that the, the, the <laughs> Senate will, this power to elect the prime minister will expire as soon as possible because uh, I don't think it's there to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, an elected government cannot survive without the support of the parliament. Mm -hmm. And even from the last election, this mm -hmm. government or the, the current um, standing gov uh, temporary government was not 
created by, you know, was not formed by the Senate. It was mm. formed by the Parliament. Mm. It has won the majority in the Parliament. And I think for the, this coming election, um, for the government to survive, it will have to win the majority in the Parliament, mm -hmm. which is uh, a practicing normal standard for mm -hmm. any functioning political system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think the Senate are there to do anything. It's, in fact, it's legacy. Mm -hmm. So it is legacy. <laughs> <laughs> it has no function uh, mm -hmm. in forming this new government. Mm. So that means that if the voters have make a decision, then the Senate will have to respect that. Um, even I, I wish the Senate would expect the voice of the people, mm -hmm. but looking at the Senate's um, function, mm -hmm. um, I don't think they have the power or the influence to um, affect the, the forming of this government. Mm -hmm. Because as I have said, um, for the government to function and to survive, will have to have the majority to mm. win the majority of the I parliament, mm. regardless of the Senate support. Mm. So, honestly speaking, we could be careless mm. about the Senate position. So can I say that uh, the, the role of the Senate is not part of your party's calculation as to what will happen after the election, right? No. Yeah. Nothing to do with forming the government mm. I see, or any party. Because, as I say, it's just a legacy. Mm. Um, it's a formality. <laughs> but in fact, the government will be formed practically by the support of the parliament. Mm. And it, would, it will have to survive. If it, it, if it will survive, mm. it will survive by the support of the parliament, not the Senate. Mm. So Kune Kanat, you have a very uh, interesting uh, political journey. Not a long one, but very <laughs> colorful one. Exciting one. Right. Starting in 2011, right? You yes. became the youngest politician to be elected an MP. Yes. And a few years after that, you left to become one of the leaders of the street protest against the Yunnan government, which made a big mistake by introducing an amnesty law that would benefit uh, former Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawat. And then now you're back into the mainstream <laughs> politics again. Yes. So what have you learned? I mean, what, have, what, lesson, what lesson have you learned from all these experiences? What have I learned from <laughs> politics? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, especially Thai politics. Do you feel more uh, encouraged I mean, to go ahead with your career in, in politics, or you I'm, feel more, more disillusioned with it? I, I, I've always been encouraged mm. by politics, especially mm. Thai politics. Okay. Obviously, I was educated in a foreign country, but I, I feel, I've always been feel passionate mm. about Thai politics. Mm. I, I always feel related and involved in Thai politics. In fact, my political career mm. started when I worked for Kun Apisit government, even before um, the 2011 mm. election uh, when I, I became the member of parliament mm. and I've been through basically every single role mm. <laughs> from the, in the government, yep. in the parliament, on the street mm. and now as the secretary general which is mm. very challenging especially for a newly formed uh, party mm. and in this challenging uh, mm. elect, coming up election mm. Um, and so what I've, what I've learned, I think that to be very resolute mm. about what I believe from the beginning of my career, and I've, I've always tried to remain true to myself, okay. no matter how chaotic this, mm. um, the environment, the political environment is, and have to persevere mm. um, and have to stay resolute. Mm. Right. So thank you very much, Kunlikana. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>